I, I really like the question about about positive states or positive experiences and um, that somehow the idea that I got from growing up um, and it was due to the you know the way that I grew up and the education in the broadest sense of that that I had and sort of learning that what I should be trying to do would was to cultivate positive experiences and positive states. Um, so things like I should be happy, um, I should be excited, um, I should think happy thoughts, I should like other people, um, I should enjoy my life. And along with that obviously came the, the understanding that um, I needed to minimize or get rid of the things that I'd learned were negative. Um, so unhappiness, loneliness, um, anger, irritation, um, that kind of thing. And um, so it meant that I lived my life basically continually analyzing what was going on for me and how it was going, you know, wh whether I was happy or not and then proceeding from there. And the only problem with that approach to life, and there's only one problem with trying to manage life in that way, and it's that it just doesn't work. And, um, and I poured all of my time and my energy in, into those, those ideas of trying to keep at bay the negative um, descriptions or experiences and to try and accumulate the positive or the, the, the pleasant or the happy ones. And, um, and, and I did get quite skillful at it. You know, I, I managed to craft and create a life where um, generally I had what I wanted. Um, and quite a lot of the time I was happy. Um, and, and yet, no matter how hard I worked, I still experienced intense anger and irritation, really not for any particular reason. It seemed to be, you know, I could blame it on somebody, it's something that they said, but really it just sort of flared up out of nowhere. Um, there was often a sense of everything being completely pointless, absolutely pointless. And it was, it was everything was meaningless. It's like, what am I doing? Now, why am I pouring all of this time and energy into creating this life when it's just, it's not working. I, I can't only be happy. And um, so that led to a feeling of, of being a failure. You know, was, well, well, what am I meant to be doing then if, if this, this is not working? And um, it was quite fortunate for me around that time of just of, of reaching points of, of seeing that these old strategies that I'd had to try and keep myself happy and make myself happy, they just weren't, it was obvious to me that they weren't working. Just, it was just so obvious and that led to this kind of slight despair or angst or just hopelessness and well what, what am I doing and where do I go from here? It, you know, I've tried so many different things in my life and many of them I've enjoyed and many of them given me a sense of, of relief or even happiness, but it's never lasted. And um, no matter how hard I worked at that amazing life, I still would wake up some mornings absolutely miserable. And um, it was around then that I met Balance View. It was just perfect timing. Um, and, and to be given a, a, an instruction or a suggestion or an invitation to take a short moment um, to just relax and allow myself to be exactly as I am. That was something that I had never heard before. Never heard and I think I was like 36 or 37 and th the whole of that life, the whole of that, those years of being alive I had never heard anybody say to me or suggest to me, why don't you just relax and allow everything to be exactly as it is, just, just, just for an instant, just for a short moment. 
And I, and I heard this suggestion. I was like, that's interesting. I've never, that's, that's something new. And I was always interested in new things. And I wanted to understand, if you like, the nature of reality. I wanted to understand what was going on. And um, so I tested out this suggestion of, of just taking a short moment <coughs> and of just stopping the describing because I saw that my whole life I was describing continually what was going on. Just describing everything, describing what I'm feeling, how it compares to how I felt in the past, how it compares to how I should be feeling, um, comparing myself with other people, just thinking about this, what needs to change, what, where can I go next that's going to make me happy or what do I need to stop doing or start doing with my eating habits and you know, just thinking about everything the whole time. And, um, and it was exhausting, you know, at points it was just absolute exhaustion trying to manage all of this, um, this experience. And so the immediate relief of having this suggestion of just to relax for an instant and I could see that in that instant there was something about me that was absolutely stable, that was naturally present and that I could access as soon as I just stopped describing. And that that I identified was the openness of intelligence. It was an intelligence that was always opening and it's the intelligence that's looking through your eyes right now. It's not something far away and esoteric and mysterious. It's naturally present right here and right now. It, it's your capacity to hear these words, to sense everything that's going on around you. And for me to identify this for myself was just, um, was just incredible. And I saw that what I'd been doing for the whole of this life would been, had been completely and absolutely focused on all of the descriptions about what was going on all of the descriptions and just thinking about them, managing them, trying to control them, keeping the negative ones at bay, trying to hold on to the positive ones. Those were slipping away, got to get them back. Oh no, I'm feeling depressed now. What do I do about that? Maybe I need to take some really vigorous physical exercise or um, smoke a joint. That sort of numbs me out for a bit or um, oh, I know I'll fall in love. That's great, isn't it? That's really loads of positive data there for a while. And, um, but none of these things led to this permanent sense of satisfaction, none of them. And I looked into all of them quite thoroughly, um, probably like you have. But to discover in this short moment that this stability and this ease and this openness of being was something that I had immediate access to for me was absolutely revolutionary and at the beginning it was like this is this is how it, it it can't be this simple i've been reading all of these books about all of these ancient masters and complicated practices and traditions and purifications and healings and karma and lifetimes and it, it can't be this simple it, it can't be this simple and, um, but I was open enough to test it out and I, I took another short moment went and just relaxed and I came to an open meeting and again there was this reminder I could relax and there it was again, there was this openness. And slowly by repeating these short moments I saw in my own experience the truth of what it meant to be human that I did not need to spend all of my time and energy managing my experience. It was just something that I'd learned and then had been telling myself for so long that it just seemed to be the way that it was. Everybody else was doing it. Everybody else was running around trying to um, desperately work out how they could only have positive experiences. You know, in a kind of manic, frantic way, this wanting this relief from the, the negative things. And um, it was amazing to begin also to take short moments with the afflictive or negative or difficult experiences and, um, and to discover for myself the truth about what is their actual nature. And physical pain is, is so powerful. Um, 
I remember the first time I allowed myself to feel physical pain, just, just for an instant, you know, just for a short moment of relaxing. And, and it, it was incredible, really incredible, because I had so many stories, so much I'd learned about what my body was and what physical pain meant and how I needed to deal with it. And to recognize that actually physical pain was in the direct encounter with it, just by stopping all of my descriptions about it and allowing it to be as it was, was also the inseparable dynamic energy of this open intelligence, like everything else I was experiencing. It couldn't be found to have a nature separate or independent from the open intelligence within which it occurred. And I'd had that as an intellectual understanding. I kind of knew that made sense, that nothing could occur outside this intelligence by which it was known. But the instinctive recognition of that by allowing myself to feel physical pain was something else, different from this intellectual understanding, and opened up so many of my ideas about um, my hopes and fears around physical pain, around mortality, also opened up an ease and relaxation of seeing what would actually be of most benefit for me in this situation, including my body. I wasn't then taking up some extreme and saying, I don't have a body. It was just naturally included in open intelligence. And I could relax with physical pain. Seeing that I could relax for one moment with physical pain completely changed my experience with it. Because I saw that most of the suffering that I had around physical pain wasn't the actual sensation itself, it was all of the stories that I had around it. Um, and it was amazing to go through this training and, and have had some really unpleasant things happen to my body um, that have been experienced in a completely different way to the way that they were prior to this training. And it doesn't mean that I was happy that they happened or anything ridiculous like that, but they were opportunities for training up the obviousness of open intelligence and its beneficial potency. Because your intelligence is already completely open and clear, seeing everything as it is. You are learning how to access the most comprehensive kind of wisdom and intelligence that a human has access to. So firstly, by relaxing with the physical pain, I saw that um, I didn't have to give myself a hard time about it. So with physical pain and injuries, immediately it was like uh, pressing a trigger and I would spin off into all kinds of stories about um, maybe it's cancer, maybe I'm dying, um, and then when I did have something physically wrong, this is just terrible, um, I'm, I'm never going to be able to swim again, I'm, I won't probably, you know, this is some really serious disease and I'm, you know, who knows what's going to happen, all of these things I love doing, I won't be able to do, looking at all of the really fit and healthy people and feeling really angry at how healthy other people were and this whole drama playing out from, from one sensation and it would just happen so quickly. And to cut that story just with a short moment of stopping that description and allowing the physical pain to be as it was, gave me, first of all, the relief from this suffering about the story, about what it was and what it meant, and how disastrous it was, and also gave me the, the clear, relaxed seeing of what I actually needed to do in this circumstance. So it wasn't about ignoring it at all, but the whole drama around everything just opens out, and all we find is this clear seeing that is naturally of benefit. We see how to take care of ourselves. Um, and I see for myself with, with eating habits, there are so many different ideas out there about what's healthy and what's not. And one of the things that's really not healthy is becoming, I see for myself, really tense and stressed about not eating the right food. That is really unhealthy regardless of what food you're eating, the tension around knowing that you're eating really bad food is probably worse for you than anything that you can eat. So again, the short moment of just completely relaxing those descriptions and learning to trust your innate wisdom. This intelligence that again is just looking through your eyes right now, 
shifting the focus from only the descriptions about what's going on to recognizing the intelligence within which and inseparable from which all of these descriptions are occurring. And that's what you do in this practice of short moments. And the invitation is to test it out for yourself. You know, even if it's just for today, with whatever's going on for you, whatever thoughts, emotions or sensations that just happen to arise today, use that as an experiment. You can use today as a test to test out short moments and to dis discover what you find. And, and that's all I did when I came to this training. I was like, okay, I can, I can test that out. And, and I wanted something, a practice that I could test out for myself. I didn't really, by the point, by the time I came to this training, I didn't want to know about other people's realizations or wonderful experiences. I wanted something that I could discover what was going on in my life and the truth of that for myself. And through this practice, that's what I found. And I just tested it out again and again and again. And what I found was so far beyond anything I had imagined that I looked further into it. I wanted to know more. And then that was the time that I engaged more with the training. I started participating in the written trainings to really examine what this was, this intelligence that I was just getting familiar with and the implications of what that looked like. And then I began to really be interested in other people's experience of this. Um, and that was really powerful and fascinating. This wasn't just me that had this access to this intelligence, it was lots of people all around the world. And the ease of being around people like that, the way that we related, when all of the drama in relating wasn't being played out, was just incredible. And you can come to this center and everything here, everything you see, the, the kitchen, everything, the open meeting, all of the trainings, it, it's, it's put on by all of us, by volunteers. We have a few very helpful um, locals that help us out. And it's wonderful to see them also being swept up in this easy, naturally respectful way of relating where the drama is allowed to be as it is. So everything opens out within this field of complete benefit. And you come here and there's no drama. And it seems kind of normal. And it actually is normal. This is the way that human beings are meant to relate. It's not this sort of battlefield of battling with all of our data about each other. The anger, irritation, love, desire, and basing it on that. When the relating is based on complete openness of perception, everything flows effortlessly and seamlessly. Test it out. Find out for yourself.